to our first lady, lady girl, to our pool pit staff, to every heart in the building, to my wonderful husband over here. I give honor to everybody. Amen. If you will, turn your Bibles with me to Psalms 27 and 13. And we just thank God because, you know, we're going to make the enemy out of a liar today. Because this morning, I was not feeling my best, and I'm still not feeling my best. But you know what? God is still good. Amen. And he still sits on the throne. Amen. Psalm 27 and 13 is a very familiar passage. Just say amen when you have it. Amen. And it says, I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the land. Look to your neighbor and say, do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Look to the other and say, do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? See, it talks about the land of the living. And when it talks about the land of the living, I think about a place where I will stand. I think about a place where I dwell, where my present being is. I think about where I am currently located. See, what I was facing in the scripture and saying, what I was facing was so big that it might have taken me out. It was so strong that it should have taken me out. But the scripture said, I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. See, Paul is talking in the scriptures, but for a moment I would like to give recognition to the word goodness. See, see, the word goodness sometimes gets bypassed, you know, when we read the scripture, but the goodness of God. If you think about the goodness of God, it describes the very essence of God. Because what God is, because what God is, God is. It describes the character of God. It describes the quality of what God makes available to us. See, Paul is understanding that because of God's very essence alone, he is saved. See, we say in the church a lot of times that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. That means when I wake up in the morning and I look in the mirror and I'm not feeling up to par. Oh, you see me, 
in my little <laughs> and in my spiritual imagination I believe he lied too. <laughs> so funny because after that I went to the mirror because I had a little bruise on my lip. And I looked in the mirror and I saw how my tooth and the bruise were perfectly aligned. And, and it's so funny because you can be praying and fighting for your life at the same time. You can be praying, whipped, bruised, scarred at the same time. And, and God is sending me here to tell you that your scars are in alignment with His will. Your scars are in alignment with what you've been praying for. Complaining only wastes time. 
See, complaining only takes up the room that God needs for this new season. See, you stop complaining about Herman, Miss Piggy, and, and Mad Maggie, and Sneaky Amen. Sam because they did you wrong. You stop complaining because it ain't the same. You stop complaining because the season is changing. Because whatever new season is, leaves always grow back. Amen. The leaves always grow back. The leaves will always change colors. And the roses will always bloom again. And the sunflowers will always carry seeds. With every new season, there has to be a change. But you can bank on it that the seed will always remain the same. That the root will always be true. And you can bank on it that the leaves will always grow back. The prodigal son, he always came back. With Job, he lost everything. He lost Just 
upon your request. He delivers because you are his child. He delivers because you belong to him. When you gave your life to him, your inheritance came with it. Amen. Amen. See, sometimes it feels like it's hard for me. And sometimes it feels like you're going to lose your mind. But I, I loved it when one of the pastors, Bishop Noah, he said, sometimes you've got to lose your mind to find your mind. Things like in 2 Corinthians, says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So that old mind that you had, that old way of thinking that you had, see, all of that has to now become new. See, Lord, give me a new mind. Lord, give me a new heart. Lord, give me a new talk. Lord, give me a new walk. See, change the way I respond and change the way I pray. Give me more power. See, Lord, I need a fresh anointing. Please, I thank you. Lord, I need you to show up and show out in my life like you never did before. See, the season is changing.
saying you have to be able to follow his statutes. You have to be able to be a reflection of his character. So if you can find yourself ever not being good to somebody, remember that's not a God job. Your job is to be a good Christian. We don't find ourselves being mean, dismissive, rude. It's my way or the highway. Because let me find out something. When God sends somebody to do a job, and we find ourselves getting in the way of each other, and we find ourselves getting in the way of God, God will replace you. A funny way of talking to him. And I came to him the other night. And I said, God, send me again. <laughs> and sometimes your prayer, it doesn't have to always go, Oh Lord, Heavenly Father, God, right now in the name of Jesus. Because yeah. this thing is personal. This thing is a relationship. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to be real with God and say, God, it's me again. And I know it's been a while. <laughs> I got it's me again. And I know I ain't did everything right. Oh God, it's me again. I know I've been sick and sin. Whatever your story may be, you come back and you say, God, it's me again. I'm sick in my body and my finances ain't right. Oh God, it's me again. And I can't make it on my own. Oh God, it's me again. I need another hat. It's a me again moment. Words. So we get to the wall right here, and we said, I'm going to be like Helicopter. 